On October 29, 1969, two young engineers embarked on a mission that would inadvertently lay the groundwork for the modern internet. Charlie Klein, a 21-year-old graduate student at the University of California, Los Angeles, and Bill Duvall, a 29-year-old systems programmer at Stanford Research Institute, were tasked with establishing a computer connection over 350 miles apart. Their project, known as ARPANET, was sponsored by the U.S. Department of Defense, aiming to create a robust network that could share data without relying on traditional telephone lines. The Advanced Research Projects Agency Network, or ARPANET, introduced a revolutionary method of data delivery called packet switching. This innovation would eventually form the backbone of the internet as we know it today. At the height of the Cold War, Klein and Duval were at the forefront of this ambitious technological experiment. Their mission was to connect two computers, a task that seemed simple but was fraught with challenges. The computers of that era were massive machines, noisy and cumbersome, yet significantly less powerful than today's devices. In a small room with lime green walls at UCLA, Klein prepared to type the first message. The plan was straightforward, type login to establish a connection with Duval's computer. However, fate had other plans. As Klein typed, he only managed to get as far as LO before Duval informed him over the phone that the system had crashed. This unexpected failure meant that the first message ever sent over the ARPANET was simply LO. Despite this initial setback, they managed to establish a successful connection an hour later, marking a monumental achievement in the history of technology. Reflecting on this pivotal moment, Klein admitted, we were just trying to get it to work. Neither he nor Duval realized the significance of their actions at the time. They were simply focused on solving the technical issues at hand. The crash occurred because the network's speed vastly outpaced the system's ability to process incoming data. It was like trying to fill a glass with a fire hose. After identifying the problem, Klein adjusted the buffer size, and the system was back online in about an hour. The goal of ARPANET was to connect information workers, enabling them to share problems, observations, and solutions seamlessly. While they anticipated a significant impact, they did not foresee the commercial adoption of the internet or the rise of social media. As Bill Duval noted, the ARPANET pretty much created the concept of routing and multiple paths from one site to another, laying the foundation for today's internet infrastructure. Their work was a critical part of a larger vision, one that continues to evolve. Looking back on the internet's evolution, Duval expressed mixed feelings. While the internet has become an indispensable part of daily life, it also presents challenges. The openness that allows for innovation also makes it a target for malicious activities, privacy breaches, and the spread of disinformation. We have seen the power of disinformation in directing policy and elections, Duval remarked, highlighting the need for careful management of the internet's influence on society. The journey from ARPANET to the modern internet offers valuable lessons. While the internet's openness is a strength, it also necessitates some level of control to ensure functionality and security. As we stand on the brink of new technological advancements, such as artificial intelligence, it's crucial to recognize both the promises and the potential dangers. The story of ARPANET serves as a reminder that even the most groundbreaking innovations start with simple, sometimes flawed beginnings.